Rub up your engines! Well, they don't sell land cruisers anymore in the United States. They started as a real big old GP type thing, standard transmission, six cylinder engine, and they evolved into these expensive rich people's cars. But they are selling the fancy Lexus version of it in the United States. Now, it's the first real all new one in 16 years. And you can see, I mean, it's a long way from a land cruiser. It's a completely different vehicle. They got rid of their V8, which I don't like. And now it's the V6 twin turbo. I'm sure they won't last as long. But I I find some of this stuff absolutely hilarious. It has six modes, auto, dirt, sand, mud, deep snow, and rock. It can alter the height of it. All the all-wheel drive system work. Come on, nobody's buying these things and going on the rocks in them. They didn't mention the price, but it's probably going to be six figures at least. You know? So over a hundred grand. Nobody's taking these things off road except some crazy sheep, maybe. You know, I don't know. I guess they're playing into the fantasy of oh, I can take mine off road. You know, but come on now, nobody's taking these things off roads. They get a little carried away with themselves. <laughs> Too much technology. Most of the customers that I have with all-wheel drive vehicles, they never take them off the highways. Just another fantasy world thing. They only sell a certain amount of these things, so I guess they're selling the fantasy. Yeah, you're driving over the rocks in this $100,000 plus SUV, right? I, I don't think so. <laughs> But I guess if Armageddon comes, like one of those, you know, the earthquake that destroyed California, you can escape in this thing, I guess. <laughs> Well, here's a new one that you F-150 fans or all truck fans might like. The F-150 tailgates have a new thing that's never before existed in tailgates. It's a basically a scale that tells you how much weight you're putting in the bed. There's four LEDs in the taillights that show you how much weight. One is a little, two, three, and then four is your maximum weight that you can put in the bed. Kind of an interesting idea, but of course, like everything else, how long is this thing going to last before it breaks? You know, come on now. And of course, there's so much liability involved. They're going to be on the conservative side because really, I've had people put twice the weight in an F-150 that it was rated for and they still made it back and forth where they were going. You know, it's a pickup truck. Of course, by the time those guys get their hands on it and they're hauling junk, the vehicle's going to be so old, I'm sure that little weight system isn't going to work anymore. <laughs> you know, just like on your mobile phone, it shows you the percentage of charge. This is showing you the percentage of weight that you're putting in the back. And an interesting gimmick, I'll give them that, but I mean, how long is it going to last? Guys load them up, they don't care. They know if they're overloaded, they're going to drive slower. I mean, I've seen people, when it comes to not just the bed, but towing with a truck. If a truck was rated at 14,000 towing pounds, I've seen guys pull 24,000 pounds with them, and they still pull. They're not designed for it, you know, but things can go a lot further than the conservative engineers are going to give out. Finally, somebody's using their brains in the car industry. Hyundai says they're going to develop chips themselves so they don't have to be relying on other people. Wow, there's a brilliant idea, you know? Hyundai states, they want to develop their own chips so they're not going to be dependent on people. Smart move, if you ask me. You got a factory, you're building things. If there's one mess up down the line, you can't build your cars. Hey, handle it yourself. Don't depend on other people. It only makes common sense. Finally, somebody, it had to be the Koreans, came up with this idea, you know, instead of old Henry Ford who built even the glass for his cars in his own factory. Time to go back to the way things worked and not depend on everybody else. And when one little piece in the supply chain goes down, you can't build cars anymore. You know, it only makes sense. Stop doing things as cheap as you can and firing them all over the world. Do them in a dependable place and do them yourself. It's the whole thing. You say your car manufacturers, manufacture this stuff. Don't buy them from parts all over the place. And then put them together. When I made the video for the Tennessee Game Conservation, they had my brand new Ford F-150 Ranch Edition. It was, it was a nice truck, but on the sticker it said like, parts made in the United States and Canada, 55%. Parts made in Mexico, you know, 25%. And then it said other. They're coming from all over the world. You're just asking for trouble doing that. And that makes more sense. They want to make their own chips. Shauna says, my charging system has me stumped. I got an 86 Toyota truck. It runs great, but it's not charging. When I remove the battery cable while it's running, it dies. I've changed three alternators, put an ignition switch, rewired from alternator fuse box, doesn't charge help. It's an 86, so it's still modern enough. It's got a computer system, it's not carburetor, it's got a fuel injection system. Never, ever, ever take your battery terminal off on any modern car when the car's running to check to see if the alternator's charging because that can destroy the car. All the electronics can go haywire. Back in the day, if you had a 64 Mustang, it was fine. They didn't have any computers on them. You just take it off and if it was still running, it means the alternator's charged. You can't do that in a modern car. You may have destroyed computer stuff doing that. That could easily have done. That could be some of your problem. It's not charging at all. What you got to do, you said you rewired it all. Well, you didn't rewire it all because it's not charging. Get yourself a wiring diagram. Find where 
the ignition power switch is on the alternator. Turn your key on. When you turn the key on, that ignition power switch on the alternator should get power. If it's not getting power, you got to make sure it's getting power when you turn the key on because it won't charge if it's not getting power. That ignites the whole thing. That makes the entire system work. Also check the ground of the alternator. Make sure it's grounded and also check the main power that comes from the battery that's hot at all times. The main problem I see on those is if you got an ignition switch problem or any kind of wiring problem, you turn the key on and you check at the alternator where the ignition wire goes. So when you turn the key on that gets power. If it's not getting power you got to fix that first. That's what it is 99% of the time. Just to understand when you got the key turned off that gets no power. When you turn the key on, that gets power. And if it's not getting power, all you got to do is rewire that from the ignition switch to there so that it gets power when you turn it on. Could even be a bad ignition switch. It's an old vehicle. Check that too. You know, you could unplug the power wire going to the alternator and then you turn the key on. If that wire is not getting power right out of the switch, the switch is bad. And I see that all the time. Triton 8484 says, what about used hybrids with low mileage? I know used hybrids are a bad idea because they cost a lot of money, but what about used hybrids with low mileage? I saw an 09 Escape with 45,000 miles. That's not not a bad idea. I have had many customers buy used hybrids, realize that Ford hybrid is basically the same as a Prius. It's got the same type of system. They got some patent they share with Ford and Toyota. So it's basically like a Prius and they can last a long time. If you get a good price on a used one, why not? Generally, those things, the batteries, they can go anywhere from 150 to 200,000 miles most of the time. Not that bad of an idea if you can get a good price. I've had a lot of people do that and they'll drive Uber. They'll buy a used one like that. Then they'll drive it when they get 150 to 200. If it starts to have some problems, they go buy another used one and they actually make decent money because they get such good gas mileage and with the money they get paid for Uber they make a good profit. Some of them I laugh because they say to me, Scotty I don't understand these other people. I've seen people driving Suburbans for Uber which of course get horrendous gas mileage that you're going to be eating up with gas where the Prius is going to get probably five times the gas mileage. It makes more sense to have a vehicle like that and that Escape is basically a Prius. A lot of the stuff inside is exactly the same as the Prius. So then they're not bad. If at that mileage you can get a good enough price that isn't a bad idea. You don't want to buy one that's got 150, 200,000 because the batteries cost a ton. Working on those hybrids when they do break, hardly anybody knows how to fix those things and the parts are super expensive because you generally have to go to the dealer to buy them. But with a little mileage like that, maybe not a bad idea. Harbinger says, my rear brake rotor is worn out unevenly. I took my car to Pep Boys. They said that the left rear brake rotor is 0.386 inches and the other side is 0.382. They suggest that I change the pads and turn the less worn out to match the other. What should I do? You're going to get uneven wear on anything when it gets old and worn out. But never, and I mean never, ever in any modern car, turn the rotors. The rotors are so cheaply made, they wear unevenly and they warp. They warp because the steel is thin, isn't good enough. You turn them, you got less steel. They'll re-warp even faster. I've seen guys do, oh, I turned my rotors. And then today they find out that six months or a year later, they're warped again because now they're thinner and they'll warp even faster. Replace them if you want. Now, he also said the calipers need servicing. I don't know what they mean by servicing. You know, Pep Boys is a chain, not the greatest mechanic in the world's work there. They're just trying to sell you stuff. If your calipers are sticking, drive it. Jack it up right after you drive it and break a lot. Spin them. If they're not sticking, they're okay. If they're sticking, yeah, you probably need to replace them. Get remanufactured ones. Don't have somebody service them. That's a bunch of BS. They don't need any service. They either work or they don't work. And if they don't work and they're sticking on, you replace the things and you can get decent remanufactured ones. But never ever have them turned. And if these guys are suggesting you turn them, go someplace else. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't understand modern cars at all. Gee, it says, can excess idling cause a car to burn oil? My grandma's car burns oil. It only has 9,200 miles. She sits in park and listens to the radio with the engine running three to four hours a day. Well, it can now. That car's so new with that small amount of mileage, it shouldn't burn oil. Plus, it's an Italian engine. I got with a Fiat. It had 7,000 miles the other day. It was a Ram Pro Master City rebadge Fiat, is what it is. The stupid thing's burning oil. It's only got 7,000 miles on it. They're just junk. Now, over the course of time, idling can make it burn oil. You don't want to sit there for three or four hours idling. That's not a smart thing. It does wear the engine over time. Not that fast, not 9,200 miles, but it will. You don't want to sit. Cars weren't made for sitting and idling. They just weren't. I mean, if you can sit and idle, all the time get a diesel don't get a gasoline car because the diesels can handle it a lot better not gasoline cars they're made for running at a certain speed you go too low clogs everything up and wears things but not that fast you know? buy her a radio or an ipod or something you know so she can listen to music <laughs> so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell